More! Like, should I... Do you want me to... Are you nervous, Phil? I am. Are you Why nervous? nervous? Why are you so nervous? I don't know. I've been on so many podcasts, <laughs> and I've I've actually also like been talking about wanting to start a podcast, like yeah. through, via Wong Fu, because just like I talked to so many people about just a lot of subjects, and then now we're like actually here set up for it. I'm like, <laughs> how do I do talk? <laughs> <laughs> how do I look? I got you got you got these nice mics. I know. You got the um, screen. Look at this. No, so that's the thing. Like, I mean, this is so typically on Thursdays we release a lunch break. So instead of a normal lunch break, we're releasing this, uh. and this is gonna be like. 45 some minutes right of, of just talking and maybe it's like a test into a podcast interview kind of uh medium but uh yeah like this is going to be different for for our fans so hi everyone hi one of these cameras hi. uh i know this is different um but you know we wanted to do something very special because we have a very special guest today our good friend harry shum jr um is at the Wang Fu office. We've been trying to get you, you know. Hey man, I've just been waiting for the invite. Oh please. Yeah, no, I, you've I, been I haven't got an official invite. This was I actually invited myself this <laughs> time. Not, I did. I had called true. you up and I was like, hey, I want to come on and then yeah, Well, you've been you know, in different countries, <laughs> you know, work hopping from different pro like you were you were in Canada. I feel like you lived in Canada for like <laughs> six years, basically. Yeah, I'm uh, honorary um, Canadian. Right now. No, you've been you've been super busy, and uh, I always like. I feel like you know I do have we ha you know a lot of these actor friends that I'm just like I can't keep track of where they are sometimes, and I was, I'm also like oh they don't want to come on a YouTube channel. <laughs> But uh, it's that's why it's such a pleasure to have you. Thank here. you, thank you. Yeah. It's, it's funny because rolling back, like I think I actually hit you guys up about wanting to do shorts too. So wh where is this? This is a one-way invite. This, this is, is actually happening. this is actually um, uh, you know session for me to to deal with my imposter syndrome right now. So <laughs> I'm gonna lay down here and you can continue this. Um, no, I think uh, yeah, I think just you know like looking at you know, what you've been doing for so many years. And even when you did reach out to us back in the day, which we'll get into for sure. Um, yeah, that was already such a big moment for us. Cause I think when, you know, coming up for myself and Wong Fu, um, you know, like just going into media was not ever really part of my plan. And so knowing that there were, you know, legit people that were reaching out to us, I was like, what is going on? You know, so um, it's all been growing process, but we're not here to talk about that <laughs> right now. Um, Harry, uh, has some really exciting news. It's already you guys should already know. Oh yeah. Yeah, but yes. Harry has a movie out right now. It's called All My Life, and it's available on uh, just a bunch of you know VOD uh, platforms. Um, tell us like I, I guess a little bit about uh, the the film. Yeah, All My Life. Uh, it stars Jessica Roth and and myself and um, and a bunch of really really great actors: Jay Farrow, Chrissy Fitt, uh, Mario Scott, and. Uh, it's this inspired by this true story about this couple uh, who got engaged and then shortly after uh, uh, named Jen and Saul and one, Saul found out that he had terminal cancer and mm -hmm. he only had a short amount, amount of time left in his uh, on earth and um, so they decide whether to you know just fall into it and go to chemo or while they were still doing that but whether to, to just, you know, let the end ride out or, yeah. or go forward with, with the wedding. And it was their friends that really banded together and, and, uh, put up a, a, a fundraising deal and got them the wedding that they, uh, have always wanted. Yeah. And it's just a beautiful story of, of, of just resilience and hope. And when, uh, when, what year did that, did it ha happen in real life? Uh, about five years ago. Okay, I feel like I remember you, reading. The yeah, news there was about a viral yeah, video. Exactly. That, yeah, that that happened and, and and just very inspirational couple. But it was more about like just strangers putting yeah. chipping in and, and 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 donating so so this couple can have just you know one last beautiful big memory. Right. Um, but the movie dives a little deeper and and Jessica is is incredible in it and it was just really really emotional um, and and. Also, there's a lot of beautiful moments that, you know, I, I, when I first heard about it, I was like, oh, it's just, I, I thought it was going to be just a crying face. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, you the know. trailer already, like, can make you cry <laughs> in just two minutes. So I can imagine what the full film is going to make you, you know. Yeah, so. yeah, well, it makes you feel a lot of things. But mm. I, I think, the, the, you know, Todd Rosenberg, is a, he's a writer and first time kind of screenwriter for mm. a big major film. And, 
and um, I just thought he did a really beautiful job on 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 looking at the small things, little things in, in life and, and, and pulling them out and making it big. And I think a lot of our relationships we sometimes take for granted. Yeah, for sure. Um, in terms of like how you got involved uh, to be like this, the, the main ca character, um, like, I guess when you when you first heard of the story, obviously there's no film that's being talked about. Like, I guess at what point were you kind of brought into the conversation? Uh, I, you know, I heard about the story, I think yeah. since like, you know, you watched it and I watched it and, and I think in my back of my mind, I was like, oh, this would be, you know, a, a, a this film. could be a great, should, should a be, great movie. Be, yeah. You know, it's just like, it's yeah. just everything about it is, you know, sometimes we just need those, um, good films of just of just hope you yeah. know and, and 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 romance tragedy is is or romance drama i guess it's it's a you know hollywood likes to take those on but there's there's this i, I read the script yeah um and this was about a year and a half ago oh wow and yeah. um and then my agent was like let's i think let's try and get you in for this mm -hmm. and part of me is like you know you I heard Jessica Roth was on it and I didn't, I wasn't familiar with her work, but I hear great things about yeah. her. And then I went to the chemistry read. It was a chemistry re read with her. And, um, usually those are just, you know, you, you, right away you'd be like, yeah, I'm not going to get this, <laughs> you know, you, you, cause you know, if the chemistry is there or not, mm. you, you built, cause it's also one of the hardest things you do. You're in front of someone that you just shook hands with and, yeah. and you have to go dive deep yeah. into like this emotional place. And, uh, but, you know when you find like an act actor that just is is you connect with on 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 an emotional level and, and and you know i just felt it right there and then i was mm -hmm. like oh this 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 could be something really special if we keep yeah. keep this going and then you know uh, a week later i i, I was a, i was i got it you know? nice uh, when you and you game. you all shot in canada also no 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 we shoot uh we shot this in uh new orleans oh which is the have you been in new orleans yeah 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 <sighs> i mean i've been to certain parts of new orleans that maybe some people would not say is fully represented oh uh, yeah 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 but, oh i love that place yeah. man i had the best time you know it was it, it felt like i wasn't in america in no you're, you're, you're just you're, in another yeah. place and it's just so much like soul yeah it's like there, there's it's a lot of fun there's so much and, and there's like really good food there mm -hmm. and you, you could feel the hospitality and yeah um yeah we had a great time out there and we just we we did so many random things that i would never have done in like go-karting in like the pouring rain like because it's, it's louisiana because it's louisiana it's just do whatever yeah. it was great i haven't seen it yet as of this recording but i can't wait to watch it and um you know I, I i will say though you know when the movie was announced i had a visceral reaction though because it's obviously titled all my life <laughs> yeah. and you're in it as a lead and i'm like man wong fu did it first <laughs> i'm gonna say it this is what these. This is what this content is for. It's for me to say this. Um, I'm trying to string it all along. Yeah, Every yeah. character I play, I'm trying to string it. So yeah. You can go back and be like, "There's a connection." There's a it. multiverse happening yeah, right yeah. now of, of Harry's. No, because uh, yeah, in, uh, you know, we've talked about it obviously many times on on this channel and at, at Wong Fu. But obviously, yeah, you are the star of our series, Sing by Thirty. Um, and there was a very important moment. Spoiler: It's been four years, so. Sorry. There's not spoilers. It's not anymore. a spoiler, yeah, but yeah. Uh, you know, we're all my life. The song "All My Life" is yeah. a very integral part. So I just think it's funny that "All My Life" has been following you all your life. All my life, <laughs> and it will all my life. It's so funny because like um, some people who are walking walking the movie, I'm like, oh, all, all my all my life, the, the song. They're yeah. like, what? what? <laughs> so they, they didn't even know they didn't even know the song. They were like, what, what song is that? And oh my like, god that's what the title of the movie <laughs> oh you don't know it's funny because I, I a lot of fans point that out yeah a lot um and just like kina's i mean yeah kina's beautiful voice it's just uh it was, i i have such fond memories of of that project um i mean oh, me I, you you've been on many tv sets prior to that but that was the first time like wes and i were like on that scale, which was already, I think, from what I've learned since, like still on the lower side of the <laughs> scale. But um, like apparently our entire series budget was some was some like shows like per episode budget. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, but it was huge for us, like, you know, having 
hermits. <laughs> yeah, and, yeah, and, trailers, like, like, yeah. and you don't have to deal with everything. Yeah, like people cool. like handle it for you because yeah. it's their job. Someone made a poster for us. You yeah, see his, yeah, his right coverage. Here, yeah, you will be a poster. Um, but and also like I, I, you know, when it finally came out, um, you know, we we had a billboard. Dude, giant billboards all, all over the place. It was crazy. It was it was yeah. you know, I had um I had one of the be- some of the best times on on that shoot just cuz I knew you guys before. I think it always helps when you when you work with someone you know before, you've kind of worked with yeah. and then like it's exciting cuz you're working on something new and different. Yeah. Next um, level, yeah. Like yeah, and then together. and what you guys were really able to do was um I was really impressed that it didn't you didn't seem like out of place in that mm. element it was just like okay yeah yeah we we've we've done this yeah. type of work as far as just telling stories you know you 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 went into it and not kind of there's no hesitation mm-hmm. it was like this is we're the directors of this and we're also like the writers of it and we have a right you guys had a writing staff yeah to see you guys work with other people i think a lot of times when when people get on a bigger budget show they don't know how to like collaborate Mm -hmm. with people yeah that's i think that is the demise of a lot of like artists that that just go into those spaces and just like clam up because they don't know how to talk to different people and there's different departments that you got it's like they're all coming for you for an answer right yeah i think i think that in that pro like single by 30 on that scale was like really showed to me that oh all the little things that we did at through wong fu's youtube channel kind of like it, it prepared like there was definitely like this little preparation kind of like the miyagi mr miyagi like, yeah, oh, yeah, yeah, I'm, yeah why am i just waxing this and then you realize oh it's because of it's going to end result in have this you know uh, effect later on or use right and like all these little things that we did th- for our youtube channel it kind of culminated to be applied in, the, in these areas and i guess like even just relating back to that imposter syndrome that i still feel a lot these days it's like that there was definitely moments where i was like oh I guess I kind of belong here. Like, like it's not that gap is not as far as I thought it was from mm-hmm. YouTube to, you know, traditional Hollywood. Like on that note, even yeah, back to what we were saying when when you first reached out to us, there was definitely those feelings of like, wait, why is this Hollywood actor wanting to talk to <laughs> us, right? Um, but yeah, those that was I'm trying to like put myself back in that was like 2012, was 20, yeah, or 2011, 11 no, no, or 12, no, no. 11, actually, I think it might have been 2010. 10, yeah. And then, and you, was it really like just a cold email? No, I, I think, okay. So I was on like the second season of Glee. Oh my gosh. um, Season two of Glee. (laughs) Yeah. I think it was like second season. And then I, I saw one of, I think it was like, it was with Chris Din. I forgot. Oh, Psychic Roommates. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. It's crazy how much like Psychic Roommates. No, 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 no. Like, it wasn't Psychic. It, wasn't? it was the one where he got stung by a bee. Stung by or a bee. It was, he's by a pool. Oh, the allergy. Yes, the allergy. <laughs> yes, the allergy. Yeah. Where he, where he turned into a uh, like a girl every time he smokes. Yeah. Oh, no, sorry. No, no, no sorry. No, no. He turned into David Choi every time he smokes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That, and I thought it was hilarious. Oh I just, I've. I remember watching that and I was like, this is really funny. And I'd never seen, I mean, there wasn't, there were very few channels that were just doing shorts like that. And coming off of also just, you know, off a show where, you know, you're, I'm doing all these like extravagant, huge dance numbers and musical numbers and and not really getting a storyline. I was like, Mm. I I just wanted to act. I wanted to do something. And it was cool. I was like, oh, I I would love to, you know, work, work with you guys and be on a short. So I think I posted that video and then you guys said like oh hey thanks for like and then i think it was like hey let's work together and we're like yeah uh, sure (laughs) and then i think i don't know someone sent someone's phone number and dude then, uh, like it's before it, dm happened it, was right, like, there was right. no DM. it had to be very public yeah it had to be like you had to publicly say i want to work with you and be like and then have everyone say like back it up or yeah, not. yeah yeah oh my god i think like I, I think that's something that i've i've realized later on now where it's like a lot of actors even though they might be on like a big show where you know the visibility or the scale is really nice like as an actor yeah you still want to you just want to act yeah you want to act you want to get more reps in and try different things and yeah so i think after that we we met up i remember i think the first place we met was at like a korean barbecue place hell yeah 
Uh, you got so drunk. You got so, so wasted. Drunk. You were like slurring. You're like, how yeah, about totally. how about you? Oh my like, God. You totally like, no. <laughs> we're going to, we're going to make this. It's going to be crazy. Um, no, but yeah, we, and we made, we made three sketches and that was like the kind of like the first time we collaborated. And then, um, the year after that, uh, no, even with those three, I remember thinking like, oh my God, we got to be on our A game. <laughs> Harry those Shum are funny. Jr. You yeah. guys wrote some really funny ones. It you helped so... out. You helped out with them too. I did. Yeah. I did. I, yeah. Yeah. I um, but then, uh, and then we followed up the next year with the last, and that has its own history. I've actually never like. Or it's been a while since we've talked about it because we're coming up on. You kind of we just we just because I, I was it was a frag like I was in fragments. You obviously you, right, you know you right. wrote it, directed, it, and all that stuff. Yeah. But I kind of came in and did voiceover, and then it was more. The ladies that were really doing yeah, that's thing. true. That's true. Like it, you were, you were just there for one day. It's just easy. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Um, no, but like it's, I, I felt really happy that um, that the last did so well because I kind of felt like I mean, I, I mean, I guess the other sketches too were, were like did well too. But like, I was like, oh, like I, I, I felt that the last maybe you you were particularly proud of being a part of whatever. Yeah. Um, but uh, yeah, we're we're at almost. This is the eighth year. We're almost at. We're coming up on ten years since the last. Wow. So. Clearly, I've had a long history together of working together, and it's always been so cool knowing that you've been down to work with us and and down to like, you know, support what Wong Fu's doing. You know, I'm always hearing whenever we're talking like off camera, I know that you're always like super supportive and just like just waiting for that moment when you know more and more people can see what like Wong Fu's up to and what we're capable. Yeah, of. Yeah, I'm. I was. I always thought you know when i first saw you guys sketch sketches and and then they became like short films and then you know you change the subject matter um it was it was just important to see a community kind of have a place to go to yeah to just consume entertainment yeah i mean in, in a in a you know we i think the conversation of representation it's like I don't want to be having these conversations. Yeah. Like who who wants to be talking about representation constantly? It's yeah. like, you know, it, it's 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 exhausting. Right. It's important. Right. Because we have to because of things that have happened throughout yeah. history and which landed us here and be able to like well, someone's got to do it and I'm glad that you guys are 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 on the forefront of it and in a place where um, you know, for for so many years that yeah. you guys have been doing it and 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 also nurturing and and i uh like younger actors and then also actors that 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 have been in it for a while to to be part of it but i look at it it's like it's it was just good reps like being on single by 30 doing yeah. the sketches with you guys um just to be able to play romantic like characters you know and that's that was that was you would get a little bit a taste of it on 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 shows but yeah. it was it was just not enough yeah. you know so it was cool to to have a place to be able to 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 do that yeah i think like as the years go by and i have more reflective years or years looking back too it's like i'm starting to understand more of like what wong fu's place what is and hopefully continues to be like we are like kind of like the sandbox that let's hopefully let's actors who have had that taste from like maybe one little scene or whatever like get to see themselves as like hey i could i should and could be these bigger roles right um and uh and that's kind of what drives me still like especially with youtube changing so much um especially in these last handful of years it's like i, I do think about a lot like what wong fu's place is moving forward and what i keep coming back to is like oh yeah we're, we're a place where um you know these r new rising talents and established talents can like still come and and play you know and 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 develop and also contribute to the community as well because yeah. people love to see you know you know all your all your faces and and sh and see that camaraderie and show that unity but you know you touched on uh how representation is exhausting to talk about so let's talk about representation <laughs> um <laughs> Honestly, though, like you've, I mean, yeah, we've been doing it on YouTube or we've been working on YouTube or whatever digital, however you want to call it. You've for been a working very long it. Time. You've been, been working, working it on YouTube. But so have you. You've, you've seen everyone. I feel like traditional or mainstream Hollywood wants to talk about like that Asians arrived in 2018 with Crazy Rich Asians 
and that was the beginning of it or, or maybe 25 years prior there was joy luck club but there was nothing in between that's what i what, that's what i read a lot of articles like you know like mm -hmm. that that's what their assessment was of asian americans in hollywood but like no there was a lot going on that maybe not a lot of people knew about but you you were there from or you've seen it you know from like a very early stage at least you know like from the t like you know 2000s mid 2000s and i think you know we've never actually really maybe not a lot of people know this but like your own origins in uh i don't want to even want to say hollywood but just like you know your art form and your career yeah um i guess like i kind of want to see like how do you think things have changed from the beginning to where things are now which i know is a quite a long spread but um like what was that first gig that that you got um you know my career has been i guess fractured between like the dance mm -hmm. career and then that's how i first career. knew you yeah okay wait, wait, wait. dance <laughs> even though like i knew you were on glee like i think when, when yeah you were you were you were a dancer you were like <laughs> hardcore full-on dancer i i have a dance background as well <laughs> it's not like yours um but you know you you are of apple fame you know like that's the dance like people I don't think people the know the face without a face, the shadow without a That's face. That's the thing. Like <laughs> it's crazy. The the iPod shadow was was you. You know, like and that's crazy to think about. Um, but like, so yeah, that's that's your dance background, right? And then that's how it started. Going back, growing up, I I had no aspirations to be an entertain like in the entertainment industry. Really? No, I just, I didn't know what I wanted to okay. do. I, you know, when you watch movies, I, I feel you I, on I, that. I, I was like, yeah, I watch movies and I just like, what's entertaining. Yeah. And so the whole idea of like, you don't get hit with when going back to representation until you realize what you were missing. Didn't have. Yeah. You didn't have. Yeah. So, you know, I, I related to watching Sylvester Stallone yeah. and, and like Arnold <laughs> yeah. Schwarzenegger. Yeah. But, and, and it was, it was like, yeah, I mean, if I, if I, I can get that, off or whatever yeah, yeah. whatever it is or i can have have that um charisma that that yeah. uh, that so and so has but i was like I, I didn't i was like i didn't want to do like it wasn't anything in me to i wasn't right. aspiring to to become something maybe it was part of it because where's my place in it right? exactly because if you can't see it you can't see it but as a kid yeah. you didn't know that so yeah. so that alone is like a barrier yeah right and then you move forward and then dance kind of came about and in high school, I started dancing, and it was more just kind of to socialize with people. I had Do you no... remember the first person that taught you, like a move? Yes. <laughs> like, yes. What was the first move? I it was, it was for a play. Okay. It was a musical um, that I did in junior high. It was called Ducktales and Bobby Socks. Ducktales and, and Bobby songs. Socks. Socks. Yeah. And it's this like 1950s. Okay. Okay. Yeah, like kind of play. I think yeah. that that they did every year. And we had to do West Coast swing dancing, mm. and so that was partnering with with someone, and you got yeah. to really like it, it. Felt like a very sociable, like it was it was just cool, and I never experienced that because usually you're always I'm always by myself yeah. doing my own little thing, and that I was like, this is fun, like yeah. this this dance thing where you have to learn moves, yeah. Um, and then you start seeing the mimicking and like you have to mimic things, and and then I was like, oh, this is fun. Yeah. I, I love the the idea of being able to be physical and and entertain people. And then I started doing improv, and then I started, you know, getting really getting into theater, starting mm. speech and debate, and then I just like really took that in, absorbed that. Yeah. But I, 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 it was it wasn't it was always a discovery, yeah. and I think that's what the you know going to dance it was. A, constant discovery with each new job and then and acting it was like a discovery and i was like oh i could do that oh i could do this mm -hmm. and um it started really opening my eyes and so i look at whole representation of what people are talking about they're looking at a whole blanket statement which i don't think works mm -hmm. i think everything needs to you need to look at case by case yeah and yeah. once you start doing that then you can actually have something that is very progressive in the way that we're able to have these conversations right. instead of just saying like, it's just saying like all, all Asians believe in this. It's just like, right. that's not true. Right. You know, they're, yeah. they're every, not a, the whole model minority thing really hurts a lot of Asian Americans that yeah. aren't that, right. you know, uh, you know, and, and I mean, there's a whole political history behind it, but I think what I, when I start learning about history, 
spe- specifically Asian American history, that's when I was able to see like what it informed me on what I needed to to mm-hmm. to do. And but that's not the only reason why I choose certain roles, right. even though that that burden is sometimes put on you because people look at you that way right. no matter what. Well, as a as a minority too, like people will say whatever role you take, you automatically have to represent the entire group, essentially. Oh, God, like yeah. Minor it's, because it's, no, because we don't have uh, enough people out there doing it. But so like, are you, so are you saying that when you first started your career, whether it's dance or, or you know, going into acting, um, that you obviously, did you not think about the fact that you were Asian going out? Like, did that come up a lot in the, in the, in the... In dance wise, it came, it came out a lot, but not in the way that it is with acting. Okay. It's, it, was it, more, dance, it was more yeah. like, oh, yeah, look, look at the Asian dude that can dance. And you're like, oh, yeah. Mm. yeah. So you were like breaking. It was like subverting expectations. In yes. Dance. Yeah. yeah. And then when you when you get in certain rooms, also with dance, you kind of it's more of a you're all, you're only using that to identify. You're not saying that that is the reason why we need to have you like mm. as far as like what you're talking about just strictly jobs you're like yo that dude is dope oh yeah he's that asian it's almost like he's that asian dude so you uh-huh. can identify when you're talking about someone yeah, yeah, right that was your identifier yeah like a description <laughs> sure. as opposed to as opposed to you know it, it being like a box to, to mm. check off of it was more like yo that dude is dope so and, do you think that actually helped you like ex- like be proud of your identity early on that it was like hey like my asianness is actually helping me stand out yeah i it was more learning about other cultures that helped me uh, be more proud of my culture in the sense that I was like learning about so many different the differences of, of cultures and, and really embracing mm-hmm. who people really were mm-hmm. and given their talents which I'm like well I need to do that as well right. and I saw some people like just being proud of their culture and, right. and proud of and not not having that uh, uh, being something that there were was holding I, embarrassed back. about yeah, yeah. or or kind of like try and not be themselves i you know i think it really helped i met a lot of people specifically in the dance world who were just super proud of yeah. like whoever they were and i'm just like my my parents would like freak out if they like met you but it's so cool that you're like you don't care but do you think that so you're saying that that's specific to the dance community probably for, for my for I, my I, end no not, yeah. and i can see that too because because dance, I feel like, isn't so, um, it doesn't require, compared to acting, I should say, like maybe the feeling of having to fit into a mold as much as acting, I guess, which is which is already established by Hollywood. You know yeah. What I mean? Yeah. I mean, they, they would still, there would still be that problem in, mm. in the dance world when you're talking about b- dancing for bigger artists and oh, how they okay. need, like, they need two black guys oh, and then yeah. Latin guy and Asian guy. Yeah. And then you're just trying to fill that role, but you still have to be good right right i think that's 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 part of it so i mean it, you know when you start getting into that deeper conversation your head starts to spin because like well none of this really mm-hmm. lines up with anybody's right what anybody else is talking about because business is business sometimes and on but if you're talking about strictly as as dance as a group and and, and with people uh it didn't matter it's just like mm-hmm. if you're dope you're good yeah. you bring something cool to the table it's like bring them bring them on but whereas so when you started entering that you know the acting world that then did your asian identity actually start to have the opposite effect because that because you could say like in, in in acting like maybe the talent isn't as necessary then it's just about how you look yeah right? then you 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 look at the roles that you're your yeah. hand and then you start looking at the history of hollywood I, you know i would yeah. recommend if people are interested in, in this subject is to just look at the history of Asian Americans, how they're portrayed yeah. and, you know, yellow face is, yeah. it was such a huge thing, yeah. you know, along with blackface and, and actors who were right for the role completely hundred percent were not even given that opportunity firsthand, yeah. you know, and they were just given to the white counterparts. Mm. And that's, that does, has a negative effect yeah. over time. And when you're talking about how many, uh, Asian American actors can you name yeah. in the past hundred years that have been prominent yeah. and have lasted longer than you know a couple of years? Yeah, slim. It's very slim. It's yeah. very slim. And usually, when you start naming it, oh, those are the people that are come from like Asia. Yeah, yeah, yeah And yeah. come over here and, right. and act. So if you're just talking that, that's why we're in the place we're at today, and it's right. getting better. I yeah. could, I could see it, but it's it's definitely not with without a lot of work that has been done from 
actors who had suffered through for all sure. that stuff and get, and pave this way yeah. for a lot of even like me or a lot of you know actors now that that are able to get more opportunities than dude we had. um we had like an event a few years ago where jason lee uh jason scott lee yeah. like, came and I, just, love, I love I love I work with him. He's oh right, amazing. yeah, in yeah, he's um, amazing. Uh, in uh, Crouching Tiger. Crouching right? Tiger. Yeah. yeah. Imagine what he had to go through when he was when he was starting out. You know, like I can't imagine being Asian. You know, in the in the a- Asian American, I should say. You know, in the eighties and nineties, trying to trying to get work and the pigeonholing that must have happened at that time. Um, but did you did you also feel a little bit of that when you were starting out? Yeah, I did, and I just never let it get in my how, way how did you how like because i mean that that takes a lot of uh resolve spinning confidence. things i mean you you get you get mm. you hand you get handed something and you spin it as much as you can mm. to to not feel and sometimes you just some, some things you just can't spin and mm-hmm. you can't do anything with and you kind of have to bite the bullet yeah um but there's things where you can i think the subtext things that you can control yeah that might not certain people might not catch but Mm -hmm. it makes it through and gets through the lens and it captures in the camera and then the editor might see it or someone else might see it Mm -hmm. then you you do it through that that way and sometimes you don't when you don't have a voice you can find ways to do it and and if you do it long enough you'll get to that place where you can have a voice Mm -hmm. and to be able to explain it to to people that that are making decisions and hopefully you can get to a place where you are making the decisions yeah. or you're just in a room of collaboration where people are, are understanding the significance of what, what is most important and is the authenticity and yeah. trying to just put these characters out that, that aren't caricatures. Yeah. And it, it takes, it takes also just like, you know, dedication to like, you've been doing this for, you know, many, many years and you've been working at it too. And I think it's, it's kind of like symbolic that, you started literally as a shadow, <laughs> as a faceless figure, and then you were a backup dancer, and then you were a featured dancer that had some lines sometimes and had some. Oh, I did, a, and then a slew of extra work, <laughs> slew of extra work. My God, the things I what, learned. What from years me. were? What age was that happening at? It was when I first moved. I think it was like two thousand one, okay. two thousand two. It yeah. was. It was. I did. I did stuff for like the weakest link, which was like. Yeah. I, I don't know how I even ended up on. It was it's one a weakest, game show, right? Yeah, it was on the weakest link, and I got kicked out because I fell asleep. Because you're supposed <laughs> to sit there and like laugh at all the jokes, oh my God. and I started like falling asleep and I got kicked out. One time, and, I mean, honestly, like with Single by Thirty, that was our first time working with extras, and I, I remember thinking because we have so many friends now that have like extra store, like being extras. Oh yeah, and I'm like, one of you guys is gonna be famous someday you know, like, i never know right but yeah so like you oh uh, yeah I'm, I'm glad you point out it wasn't just like oh you were you know ipod commercial and then straight to glee like obviously there's a lot of work that happened but like i just think it is really interesting that you know you were like this you know coming out of the darkness literally right and showing your face and then you know obviously going from glee and then to, to shadow hunters and then to um you know more feature films and then now with all my life and and you know we've always seen, always always seen you as a leading man but now like you know hollywood is getting to see you more as that leading man also and we're seeing more asian male leading men in a variety of films and it's it it's tempting to feel like oh things are good are things one one question we get a lot whenever we go on tour is like hey phil like like are things better you know <laughs> like i think people at least like our asian fans they want to because we're here on the ground they want to hear from us like that we have good news to deliver you know? <laughs> yeah yeah you're, like, you're, you're like your pro what is your prophecy like yeah what, yeah. Yeah, what do, do you tell us please right because i think it does feel a lot of times there's there's moments in a lot of people that are whether how they're watching consuming entertainment or watching entertainment they're like they feel hopeless because um even this story with uh you know jen and saul and, and the real jen and saul yeah uh, when I talked to Jen, um, the OG, the real Jen, she told me that they used to sit and watch Glee. Mm. And they used to, you know, when I was kind of just in the background, they would just point out, it's like, oh, there's there, there's, the, there's that Asian guy. Yeah. And he, you know, he, it was, it was important to him to kind of see that. And that was yeah. one of the few places you saw that on a major network. And, yeah. and, and that's not enough. That's not yeah. good. You know, and there's so much more needs to be done. And then when you talk about these movies that are coming out, which I think are are wonderful, that have um, 
uh, you know, Asian male or Asian or Asian American faces, it's it's still it's not the fact that it's not enough. It's that it's um there's so much that has been buried in yeah. history already excluded yeah. that this is going to take time to uncover, yeah. you know, and it, you know, you can't uncover something in one day yeah. and you, or over a couple. Yeah. Films, and and yeah. when you look at an open field, there's just, you don't know where anything's at. So the fact that people have been covering this up and excluding, it's like, we have to go out there and find where it's all at and dig it up yeah. and then, sh- and then go back and see what it, what it really is. Yeah and make something out of it and put it in a museum and i'm putting this out as a metaphor with with hollywood it's like these stories need to be told yeah. we need to know the inventors that invent certain things that that were excluded and you know even just simple as like the, the railroads yeah. just uh, there's a story in like the pictures the chinese weren't even allowed yeah to be in the picture to celebrate the uh, you know them finishing the the railroads right. i mean that alone speaks volumes to what is kind of happening in in in, in Hollywood, but I, I think people are starting to wake up yeah. and realize that uh, they knew, need to do better. But also, people are getting behind the scenes and and just make doing it on their own. And um, you know, you, you guys have been wait, doing it. Yeah. You guys have been doing it uh, mm-hmm. in, in a lot of ways. But I think it takes a lot more than just yeah. like a, 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 a group of people. You know, yeah. Yeah. it's everyone telling different yeah. stories, stuff that we don't agree with, stuff that we might we might realize like oh i didn't know that about the community because this community is so freaking big yeah it's it's that's that's it's a, not that's, a monolith right exactly that's a very important point to make because i think yeah you people don't realize actually how diverse just asia the asian diaspora is right and how many stories um outside of like the the mainland or the homeland or whatever that that, that are happening and and over all these years that have just been suppressed not even, I mean, partially externally by, you know, systems in Hollywood, but also internally because, like, a lot of our immigrant families, like, they don't want to talk about their history. Yeah. Right? So you look at the, you know, you, you got to think about how there's all these stories that are untold. Um, and if if we're not telling them or we don't have the opportunities to tell them, then they, then they literally become forgotten. Yeah. Right? And they fade, they just, they, they fade away and, and, and... I, I almost see like making films and telling stories and I was like as a way to preserve, you know, just you have to who who we are and what we've been through, you know, and, and but yeah, the problem is, is that we're at least in America, we're still in a system where we are um, kind of like a last priority. Well, other you know? eyes. Yeah, They're other eyes. And, yeah. and I think that's the problem. With, like, why do we need to, why do we need to know your story? You know, and it's like, it's well, they don't know how to write. You know, yeah. I think the blame can't be 100 percent on 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 just yeah one group of people it's it's like we need to we need to mine the stories out of even our like right. parents or grandparents like yeah. tell your story so we can write it down and at least whether they put it and make a movie out of it or tv maybe that doesn't happen but just right. to have i've been like encouraging my sisters like write your story just yeah. write it down just to have mm-hmm. because that's i think it's there's a shame that kind of feels like it happens like well what what maybe what is what does it what's, matter? What's so special, what's about, so special me? about me? It's like, yeah. you're incredibly special because the more I find out, I'm fascinated. Yeah. And I think more people out there should should encourage their like families and, and their moms and dads, whether that you're helping them write it, yeah. to just tell the story because they're not all the same. And yeah. we, we think like, oh, it's the immigrant story, but it's like, there's it's, so many different like... Uh, um, entry points right. of how people whether got into the country In or maybe they, they yeah. maybe you, you realize like wait you've been here some people just didn't realize that they're like wait i'm fourth generation yeah. <laughs> you know <Yeah. laughs> it's like how do you not know that yeah. but there's there's i've met people who literally have no clue what their past is because their their uh, parents never told them yeah and like that goes back to what i was saying about like it's a, a part of it is just, a large part of it is just cultural too like we were literally, a lot of us are literally raised to be like, oh, you're not special. You know, <laughs> you're not that good. Yeah. You're not that smart. You have to work harder. You have to be, you know, and keep your head down. Don't stand out. And we, I, 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 I talk about this a lot where it's like, even in my own life, sometimes I feel like, oh yeah, like what is there to say that's different from anyone else? Right. But then like you look at like, there's a lot of movies where it's just about some kid that's just growing up in some small town. And what they're going through. Everyone has a struggle. Right. That's, that's why everyone has right. a struggle. But we've been told that it's like, 
like don't don't complain don't complain and don't make it a point or whatever so yeah. that makes it so the, i think there's a difference it's like don't complain yeah. doesn't mean <clears throat> don't tell your story but also i think a lot of times culturally it's like well don't air out your dirty laundry because yeah. a lot of times when you're talking about the struggle you're vulnerable and you're yeah. gonna have to talk about these things that aren't you, you you're not very proud of maybe right, right? no and for me I, I i totally feel that because there's so many things about like my own family and family history that I'm like, dude, it, you know, I would well, say face. Exactly. exactly I, if if my parents saw me make a film about this, they would feel so ashamed, yeah. you know, and they're like, why would you do that? And I'm like, dude, there's so many like great American directors that are like airing out all their dirty laundry about abusive parents and <laughs> drug, you know, addiction yeah, yeah, and all this yeah. stuff. And I'm like, and they're winning Oscars. <laughs> it's like, let me use our, let me exploit the <laughs> let pain, use my pain, please. Yeah. Well, I um, think it's the different, you know, I mean, I, I think, you know, I don't want to, again, generalize culture because I, I think not yeah. everyone experiences this, but you know, a lot of times the art of channeling, whatever it is that people yeah. are going through is through like painting. Mm. you know abstract art <laughs> and then but yeah. this is like direct like almost an assault on your emotion of yeah. just like what you, i don't know how to handle this and i don't know you know and i think i think the next generation is is easing into figuring out how the relationship with media mm -hmm, mm -hmm. relationship with how to tell yeah. stories and, and being a little more open yeah inviting i guess because yeah. i remember even my, my parents they're they're very welcoming people but they were also like, well, who's coming over? Mm. Like, what are their secure, social security numbers? Like, what? <laughs> no, you know, it means like, yo, they're just coming over to play. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But, you know, it's it's more like, well, I, I don't know them, you yeah. know, and how, why am I going to let them in my home? So I think it's their, their difference, even though, but when they did, and they're like, oh, yeah, serve you food, do everything mm. you can to make you feel comfortable. Yeah. So it was really interesting to, to I think when, when you start understanding different cultures, then you can have uh, a better conversation with people as opposed to feeling like, should I be offended by mm -hmm. that thing? Or should, are they going to be offended by, by this thing? Yeah. Uh, you know, going back to what we we're saying about just being open with the stories and the pain and the next generation, hopefully, you know, being more comfortable with that because they're, you know, more savvy socially. Shit, next or, generation, this generation can do it as well. Uh, yeah, exactly. Uh, yeah, yeah, that's what I'm saying. That, <laughs> but like, an importance of of making sure to f mine also stories from history, mm. and 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 tell those stories as well. But I think there's also an importance of just putting an uh, an Asian face in yep. front of uh, in front of just a, a good story. Yeah. You know, and 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 once you do that, then you can start infusing cultural aspects of it if it's important to the story. If yeah. it makes the character stronger, then you, I feel like looking at in uh, like um, inward instead of like outward of like what we're all feeling helpless sometimes. And I think that's yeah. why people do ask like, are we good now? Like, are we yeah. good? It's like everything's good, and it's like. No, there's still more work to be done because once you start self-reflecting, then I think m when more people do that, like right now, I would go back to what's been happening in 2020, just in general and within the community, like even even the, the discrimination stuff that's yeah. been happening. But also what came out of that is people came out and voted because mm -hmm. they're pissed, Yeah, you know? And, and I go back to the people who are protesting a lot of movies that were like whitewashing a lot of these. Yeah. And then they came out strong and made, and made a statement. And, you know, a lot of studios, they reversed it. Yeah. And, so, or a lot of times got, they, got hit in the, and they got hit in the bank account, right. you know. And, and those things, all those little things matter, not just one thing. And right. the focus can't just go on one. Yeah, I think, I think just whenever there's a group that's trying to make progress... It's, there's a there's a factor of impatience, right? Like, cause you like a lot of times you can you can see the finish line. You're like, why aren't we there yet? Why aren't we there yet? And you just want to see instant it happen. gratification. Exactly. Yo, Instagram. But, yeah, they've been I mean, doing but that. look at other communities that have been fighting. You know, you know, civil rights for for still at decades later. Like we're we are in a long journey of of what of like um of a mission that you know like needs to be, you know slowly chipped away at and i and i think we're getting some big chunks off but yeah like it's like we're not even you know anywhere near close to that but going back to all my life like obviously like it's based on a true story and that's why there's an asian person in it but like do you feel like race is like coming up a lot in your conversations about like or, or do you do you kind of wish that like people like would not even like focus on that because like obviously as a relationship it doesn't matter at all but as a entertainment hollywood product 
it does matter because we're seeing you as an Asian male lead. We're seeing an interracial couple. Like, yeah, I think is, it, has that been hard, kind of weird to navigate? Well, I think it only matters because we've been excluded mm-hmm. from even being in films and being a hero or being a romantic for so lead long, yeah. for so long yeah. and ex- not in not just it just excluded as hum- human rights like yeah. we haven't we haven't uh i didn't i didn't personally experience obviously like the people from you know in in, uh, in early 1900s and in you know, late 1800s it's just there's laws that just excluded yeah. people and um but that t- that has a residual effect. I think For a sure. lot of people don't understand. They're like, "Well, that was so long ago." Right. And it's like, "Well, if if ask yourself that question of like, well, can you name any of any 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 of these movies that have these leads mm-hmm. in the major Hollywood film? If you're saying if like people have uh, um, if race keeps coming up, yeah, and 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 meeting, there's this stuff. expectation put on this film, you know. Um, yeah, I mean, look, I just hope that people run away with this is inspired by a true story. It's like yeah. their story is beautiful in itself. And I yeah. think it's it's kind of late to the game that we have to even like celebrate the fact yeah. that there's a, you know, there's a romantic comedy or drama with an Asian led or one of the Asian uh, male leads. And yeah. and it just it blows my mind because I, I don't feel that way. And I'm like, mm-hmm. but it is I was like we should celebrate that but at the same time like this shouldn't be the only one like I, it should yeah. be many more and in, in different elements in different places yeah so i just hope that people continue to to observe that and to um open more opportunities i and, think and, and I, keep chasing it yeah uh because i you know i i've been i chase things yeah. in certain roles and i never get them sometimes mm-hmm. and and I think some some actors say like you're only as good as your opportunities. Mm-hmm. I was like, what does that say That's, about yeah, yeah, you know what does Asian that say? people don't have many and it's and it's crazy because yeah. I hear a lot of actors talk about that, but I'm like they're in a different place because right. they're they have millions of opportunities, right. but they're saying well, you're only as good as your opportunities, yeah. and they have maybe like thirty when mm-hmm. someone has one, and they have to do the best they can with whatever they're given. Yeah, but I think that mentality can't be like victimized you can't victimize yourself and you can't have that mentality for, for me mm-hmm. personally, I just kept pushing and going and yeah. figuring out ways to navigate this and, and just collaborating with anybody and not just about like, Oh, you have to be a certain culture. It's just like, let me, I'm going to, I'm going to collaborate with every person yeah. that I can think of that I admire. Yeah. And from then on, hopefully they can learn a little bit more about my culture and yeah. I can learn about a little bit more about theirs. And we, it doesn't, so we can start weaning away from this, even though I don't think, it will for a while mm-hmm. because there's just been so much damage that has been done yeah. over over the past century. When you and when you're talking about the damage, it's like not not just like the exclusion, but it's also the emasculation. Yeah, it's the villainization of the of the Asian guy, basically. Right? Yeah, yeah. But I feel like it, in, in some ways, I feel like Hollywood's like trying to overcorrect that, or like you know, not over. Uh, yeah, like I feel like. There's a lot of roles now that I see, and a lot of them are friends where it's like, oh, we made Asians nerdy for a very long time. So now we're going to make them these dumb jocks, you know, <laughs> like we see, like we have, we have, a, we have a, like a few friends that are like, you know, in these roles and like, I even joke about it with them. And it's, it's funny that like Hollywood just can't really grasp that. It's not that we don't want to, it's not that we don't want to be nerds or that we don't want to be martial artists. You want to be humanized. It's we, we, yeah, we want to be those things and still human or be those things and that thing and that thing and that thing. We want to be multifaceted. Right. And I think that's something that, um, yeah, like a lot of maybe traditional Hollywood, you know, producers or writers are like, oh, you don't want to be that? Okay, we'll make you that. You know, and it's like, hey, there's there's room for nuance here. Yeah, you know? uh, I think it's at times it's just it's just showing. I think what you guys have been able to do is is just showcase a lot of different. We're just aspects. being ourselves here. That's the thing. Like, I think that's the thing. Like, I don't no one here because we at Wong Fu are all you know Asian American. We don't. I don't wake up in the morning and think, oh my god. I'm Asian today, you know, and I need to, <laughs> yeah, yeah. I need to be Asian, right? Like, but it's obviously put on, it's put on, it's put on us, right? And so, but, but then we do look at our projects and we do look at our responsibility to the community and to also the other creators where, you know, um, if they can't find leading roles in Hollywood and 
and they can't even find it at Wong Fu, like then then like that's really sad, right? So like I I almost see ourselves as like yeah we can be this like resource, um and you know a a, a, a platform right to, um you know yeah, get these faces out there, get these stories out there, and where we can just be ourselves without having to like explain ourselves. Mm-hmm. Um, I always go back to like, yeah, just unapologetically Asian mm. where we, where it's not like, you know, I, I think like, it, you know, when I'm writing a, a treatment or for, for like, you know, a, a traditional studio, if I'm trying to pitch something, I feel like I have to explain why everyone's Asian or why yeah. I have Asian characters. Yeah. But here at Wong Fu, it's like, oh yeah, like we're, cause we exist. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> cause, cause I am Asian and I live. So that's why, <laughs> so that's why I have stories, you know? Um, but you know, you take it to an outside community and they're like, Oh, but like, why does this 20 something, 30 something year old guy have to be Asian? Oh, well it's cause we're trying to tell an Asian story. Yeah. And you have to like give them reasons. Yeah. That's why I just, I just believe it's, it's so important to, to share your culture as much mm-hmm. as possible with people because yeah. the, the, the better understanding that people have of each other those conversations don't need to be had you know and I, ideally I think, I think we, that's we, the we, ideal no, but i yeah. um, go back to like a lot of the different you know you guys ex- expanding outside of your community as well and mm-hmm. bringing in different stories or at least different faces yeah and i think that's incredibly important because you know you don't want to do what other people have done either right yeah. you know and but it's hard because you're like well we don't see enough of these faces so it's it becomes a thing that constantly it's back and forth and you're like you can only you can only do so much exactly which, which <laughs> that's why it's important yeah. that everyone just does their thing and knows yeah. that for the greater good it's what all that, adding up it's all too. adding up you know it'll multiply yeah. you know and but that's 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 just how thirsty and desperate our community is. Trap. yeah it, i mean honestly that like we trap. we get so few like at bats so you like any person that steps up to the plate you're like please home run please and it's like hey sometimes it's okay to bunt <laughs> yeah sometimes it's yeah. okay to you know sometimes it's okay to even get out if you're trying to run someone in sorry for these sports analogies yeah you, i don't know i why. didn't know you were such a <laughs> such a baseball but, i'm not but, that's the thing but i'm like okay so you're basketball right. well, oh, yeah. why are you talking about layups know. and like you know not a dunk people, people talk about um, at bats versus <laughs> Uh, you know um you know take your starting shot. starting a, a take a shot I take guess, a yeah. shot baby um but no yeah i think i think it doesn't have to be a three-pointer all the time. it doesn't have to be a three-pointer you, you can't, no, not it can be an assist Curry, man. it can be a pass yeah you know it can be a, behind the back exactly it can be a screen yeah. cool it's still in the sports but <laughs> yeah, anyways. yeah no and, and i think like that's where you know we're still our wong fu's um position and purpose in the play overall play is still evolving you 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 yourself are also evolving and it's it's really cool to see that journey continue i think you know even i think when we first met back in 2010 you know i i'm i'm glad that i could go i could go back in, in time and tell that person hey you guys are still friends mm-hmm. y'all are still working <laughs> <laughs> yeah that's kind of nice um and uh and i think that's that just shows you that i think you know we we're we're doing this for like a greater purpose and not just like hey we're just we're just in it for the money or the fame no, or whatever no. yeah it has yeah. to be it has to be it has to be for something yeah you know i think everything you do like it it, it changes a lot you know when i first started it was literally f- just strictly for my parents yeah and to make them proud yeah um you were sorry you still, started dancing and acting to make your parents yeah proud. yeah it was really weird what page of the playbook did you get I, that from i don't know i i you know i i Said saw no Asian i ever. saw my mom really enjoy scrapbooks and what? it was funny it was she just loved like putting like pictures of of just random things together uh-huh. and making collages and then i was like I'm going to make, I'm going to, I'm going to get in news magazines and newspapers so she can make collages and that's going to, that interest of her making collages is going to like kind of put the two together. You don't think she would have put like your degree in there, your law (laughs) degree in there or something or or like a medal or something? You know what? That's like, that's one of those reachable, like unreachable things for me. Like (laughs) I just, I just couldn't. I I went and I tried. And even my mom, for a while, she was just like, "You ever think about going back to school?" And I was like, "Cause she's going, she's going to school now. She's oh. like seventy something. She's going, she's That's going awesome. back to school. She wants to learn all these different things, and yeah. even she wants to learn Mandarin and English. She even she speaks it already, but she just wants to get." But I'm like, 
I'm barely hanging on and I'm like, I'm, I'm, I'm good. <laughs> I'm good off of, um, but yeah. And, 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 and it, and, and it changes all the time. And, and from, from then on, I really learned how important it was f- through her, uh, and my dad, cause my dad lives in Costa Rica. Mm-hmm. So he has a different kind of group of friends that he's he- hearing from and, and to see how people watch TV and movies there. Yeah. And then from like my mom's friends and like the, in her community and i th- i thought it was fascinating because it like I, i've said the story a million times but it's just like until i reached into a chinese newspaper yeah. when it was like that was that was that was it i i made it and when when i went to it i did a podcast for um i think it was sing do yapo like whoa and and she, i brought her along i've never seen her like glow is she that was, and that's a that's a cantonese like cantonese yeah yeah, yeah. Yeah, and she was just I, loving. Every I find that a trend in all, a lot of our Asian friends, um, like milestone, tri- like uh, their progress, get in their <laughs> getting into their in language newspaper. Yeah, yeah. Like we recently, like recently, like Justin Min, yeah, was was in a was in the Korean newspaper. Oh, amazing! And, and it's like that's like his that was his point. We we like were on like in the Bay Area, uh, KTSF. Like, uh-huh. Channel. We were like we got interviewed on that, and it was like. Oh man, our parents can finally think that you know we are legitimate. Yeah, something. they can brag. I mean, that's what they want to do. They want to brag, exactly. and it's 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 great. It's great. So I mean, what? Look, I think whatever whatever you do, just um, do it with. Go back to just do it with a lot of passion. Yeah. I think that's what they 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 saw. They're just like, well, we can't we can't steer him in any in any other direction because he's really passionate about this thing. Yeah, I gotta ask. I'm gonna close with one one question. Um, do you feel a lot of pressure to have abs as the sexiest, as, as a previous sexiest, like man, I don't like, know what you're people's... talking about right now because I've been eating <laughs> so many cookies. I've been eating so much ice cream, <laughs> oat milk, ice cream. So it's a little healthier. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, I don't feel pressure. You know, I, I was really scrawny and skinny when I was growing up Yeah, and, um, and I just, I didn't feel healthy. Mm-hmm. And it's I'm it sounds like I'm I'm doing it for other reasons, but I honestly I started working out and and find I found like this hobby that I didn't have, mm-hmm. and I felt just really good. Mm. And the cherry on top was that I got buff. <laughs> like, <laughs> so That's I was, funny how that I was happens. Like, yeah. I was like I feel healthy. I feel so good. I was like yeah. oh. Things are yeah. happening to my, and it's funny because I went to train. This Captain is America this is this is so this is so Asian. It's, since we're on like talking about, I, I remember a trainer was like, "Don't eat any carbs," and I was like, "Okay." Wait, who said? Like, oh, your trainer. Yeah, when okay. I was like training and I had to get really big. And for Glee, you had to get no, really no, big. no. It was, it was for a movie that I didn't. <laughs> Glee I, really needed. You yeah, Glee to, really needed to put it on. No, I, it was for a movie, and it was I, I um, it was for a pretty big movie that I ended up falling apart last yeah. minute. But, uh, I, I had to just get like gain like 15 pounds of oh like God. muscle. Yeah. Um, and he was like, don't eat carbs. And I was like, just, and he, he gave me the diet and I was just eating all like protein, keto and all that stuff. And, uh, I was like, yo, I was lifting so hard. I was, and I was just the same mm-hmm. body type. <laughs> and I was like, yeah, screw this. I'm going to eat some, I'm going to eat some rice like, <laughs> I'm, I'm, i can't i can't do it i need to eat some like bread rice i t- i'm telling you it's maybe it's in our genes like i felt like the incredible hulk <laughs> like it was like rawr, rawr, and i started feeling this way um i mean i don't know why i told this story but like, I, you're american what your white american science does not <laughs> yeah, work with our Asian it doesn't genes. work with my genes <laughs> um and uh I, I don't know i don't i don't feel pressure i mean i'm gonna have a role that comes up where i have to gain like 30 pounds and i'm I'm gonna, be, I'm gonna be happy with that's that. great. You well, you know, I'm just I'm just bringing it up because like I think like we always, you, you are you are in in the Asian community like one of the heartthrobs, you know. And I just wanna I wanna relieve you of some of that pressure, okay? That <laughs> you've done enough already, <laughs> and I, you're a dad now. It's okay for you to like take on a little bit of a dad bod because <laughs> you're making some of these other dads and maybe someday soon to be dads like, you know, feel like oh my god, well if Harry can do it. Yeah. So, but um, Harry, no, thank you so much for for coming through and, and talking for for so long and, and sharing just, yeah, like so much. Like, I feel like a, a lot of our audience has never maybe seen this side of you. And 
um it's it's so cool yeah as to... long as we've we've ever we've never really talked we've like i mean <laughs> on, we'll... on camera <laughs> on camera yeah no it's like and i think like i think like you know sometimes like having this like format kind of like forces people to like kind of talk about yeah get, get into it yeah right? and so it's cool that we could the first time us doing this on our on our channel like we're i think more people need together. to have these conversations yeah. like just not not even just have a conversation for the sake of like a certain but just talk yeah and 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 and, and i mean I, I admire what you've done what you all have done yeah. um and just celebrating that and i think these things help because we always just like what are we gonna make yeah how, how many people are gonna watch it yeah. you know how are they responding it's like well let's just celebrate sit back relax well we'll do this again yeah we'll do this again this was a lot of fun and and uh thanks for getting the nerves out of, of me too like yeah we, we do this all the time but i think once the camera's on there's a mic no like, i get it oh, i get it this has to be like it's substantial just conversation <laughs> this is permanent exactly this is exactly. permanent um, um dude well everyone let them know what like what they should yeah. do for all my life man. um uh, all my life it's on uh pvod uh so any anywhere you can buy movies yeah. on demand uh it's out now uh, it's perfect for quarantine that we're still perfect in perfect quarantine uh perfect uh christmas gift yeah if, uh, new year's gift whatever you want um, awesome but it's 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 a uh, um it's it's a, it's a really really sweet and, and heartfelt film and then jessica roth is, is is incredible in this film I can't wait to check it out myself. And um, yeah, just really happy for you, man. We're going to keep working together. Yeah. We're going to have more of these conversations. Yeah. So I'm not even going to say like, oh, thank you so much. Goodbye. You know, like, see you later. We'll see you. Yeah, we'll see you around. We'll man. see you. <laughs> we'll see you all later. So people in their car, um, just listen to this again. Yeah. <laughs> Go to, we don't have a URL yet. Uh, yeah, subscribe to Wong Fu Productions. Yeah, YouTube, YouTube channel. You can yeah, put we, on YouTube. we still don't got that thing. Don't yeah. look at it. Just turn we on. We got that YouTube. thing. Turn on that bell. You know what I mean? Um, but no. But uh, again, thank you so much, and thanks for everyone for watching. Hope you guys enjoyed this. If you guys like this type of content, um, let us know in the comments. If you liked Harry, let him know in the comments as well. <laughs> this will all be good data for us to have moving forward. <laughs> <laughs> if, if you like Harry, and yeah. if you don't, then we might not talk to him again. Hey, it, you you have. Hey, all man, the power. the power of the people. Exactly. That's what it is. All right. See you guys. Peace.